just doing a bit of a test here, just on the radar cruise control. So I've got a set speed of 51 kilometers an hour, and I've got an actual speed of 47. So I'm tracking behind the car. I've got a medium length follow distance. So you can see that with the three bars at the top here. And you can see it's locked onto the car in front with the green symbol. He's slowing down for the, uh, the speed bumps. So my bike automatically slows down. So a couple of things I wanted to try with this was following another motorbike. And it's done that pretty successfully. When you do come into 90 degree corners, it does sort of lose the other bike. Um, it's not supposed to accelerate if you're on a bit of a lean, but uh, if you've got the bike fairly upright, it will sort of accelerate. And, uh, but most of the time, I think it does its job really well. Of course, all you have to do is tap the brake and the bike will uh, disengage. No, no worries. You can change gears while you're in cruise control. So either with or without the clutch. I think if you hold the clutch for about uh, three seconds or five seconds, it'll disengage cruise control. But otherwise, I can shift up to fourth, cruise stayed engaged, I didn't have to interfere at all. Drop down just with a quick shifter. Yep, no big deal. So it's maintaining the distance really well. I think it's engaging the brakes here on the downhill maintaining that correct distance. Something to bear in mind though, if you are riding just one-handed and the bike either suddenly stops or speeds up, then you're going to have a torque input uh, inadvertently through that other arm. So just consider that. You can see that little red warning message. It's just coming up and saying brake, saying that you know you just need to apply more brake potentially, you know, emergency stop, that sort of thing. So often I'm riding in a group and the other guys in front of me may have cruise control but they're just choosing not to use it. And so they'll speed up and slow down, you know, 90, 100, 90, 100. And if I want to have a rest and use cruise control, this is the ideal thing because then I can set set a uh, higher speed limit it'll follow you know up to a safe distance up to the bike in front of me if i do want to vary that distance i can just come over here let's see press one and it's on the bottom part of the menu which is cruise control following distance go down there and i can follow i can make it shorter so that's the shortest it goes so it'll slowly creep up to that car in front and I can increase that speed as well because I think he's actually edging away. So I'll go back out of that. Plus, plus, plus. So I'm just incrementing my set speed, desired speed. And the bike is coming up closer to that car in front. Press and hold and it jumps up in increments of five. Now I'll go back, vary that cruise distance again, make it longer. And that's it. So you can see that it's one step away from its longest setting. So there's five different settings there. I disengaged cruise control there. I wasn't sure what that other car was doing. Didn't want to trust him. So the plus is the resume button. That's it. So we'll hit plus there. Cruising. responds well to foot steering so that's braking I'll drop down to second there go back to resume again so this is obviously not its usual intended use you know suburban traffic that sort of thing but I'm just demonstrating the capabilities of this system